Today in the studio, we're here with Marissa Aurora, the volunteer liaison at the Santa Fe Opera. Welcome, Marissa. Thank you so much for having me. Marissa has been instrumental in rebuilding relationships with our volunteers since the COVID pandemic brought everything to a halt. COVID? You mean that thing we don't like to talk about anymore? Just this last time. Okay. In this episode, we're making one more stop on our tour of community engagement at the Santa Fe Opera. Volunteerism. So, we have some questions for you. A few questions, I would say, yes. (laughs) But we're going to start with, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, my name is Marissa Aurora, and I was born in New Mexico and recently returned here. I am an artist, a writer, and so happy to be working at the Santa Fe Opera. You're also a volunteer. <laughs> I am. Yeah, a lot of my life is filled with my volunteer activities. I like to say that I'm always working, but not for money. <laughs> so yeah, I volunteer at a local community radio station. I volunteer in a community garden. I volunteer for various arts organizations around town. And it's something that I think throughout my life has really helped me to find meaning and connection um, with community and kind of tap deeper into myself and what kind of keeps me going and keeps me ticking. And so because of that, I love working with volunteers and connecting with other people, learning their story and kind of learning why volunteerism is meaningful for them. Where would you say this started? (laughs) That's funny. I was thinking about that on the way here and it was like, wow, (laughs) a really long time ago. Let's take it back. (laughs) Yeah. So when I was in college, I had a work study position working with houseless youth doing employment training. And so, you know, I was a volunteer there for a while and then got hired on as staff and just seeing other volunteers coming in, doing this work and feeling like we were really changing people's lives, I think was really inspiring. And I worked in early childhood education, managing volunteers at a science museum. From there, I moved on to being an ecologist and all of my projects involved volunteers. And these were people from three years old to 90 years old. And it kind of happened organically that since then, pretty much every job that I've had working for money, not volunteering, has involved volunteers in some way. So you said volunteers as young as three years old. Mm -hmm. I would like to know a little bit more about that (laughs) because when we talk about our programs and community engagement, we start at that age Mm -hmm. with engagement. Yeah. So I worked for the city of Portland, Oregon as a restoration ecologist for many years. And yeah, we would bring in kids, even preschool age, to help with our projects. Uh Yeah. And so, of course, You know, I think working with any age of volunteers, for me, it's always a combination of education and volunteerism. So we would bring the kids in and at that level, you know, teach them really basic stuff, Mm -hmm. plant identification, maybe look for insects and talk about wildlife community. And then we'd do things like pulling weeds or planting trees. Somehow I knew pulling weeds was going to come in. (laughs) I just felt it. You know, things that are really basic. They they can feel feel successful. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's horrible. (laughs) It is. Three-year-olds. I like the bug identification, actually, because that's like, I love bugs. Insects are, like, amazing. Okay, so you are also a performing artist and a visual artist. Yeah, so... I kind of had this big change in my life where I moved on from being an ecologist where I'd worked in nine to five for a really long time, took a break, traveled full time. And when I stopped traveling and started settling down, I had to kind of reevaluate what I wanted to focus on. And I've always considered myself an artist. I've always considered myself a writer. And yet there were these huge periods of my time where I wasn't spending time doing those things, which I think a lot of people experience. Mm -hmm. And so I decided settling down in one place geographically to also settle into that part of myself and really invest in myself as an artist, as a writer, you know, time-wise, financially, buying equipment for filmmaking, buying art supplies to make sculpture. And I found that when I started doing that, other people started investing in that part of me too, and all of these doors started opening up. An art collective that I'm part of here in Santa Fe just got nominated for Best Art Collective in the City, which is this thing that All of our minds are just blown because it started this thing where we were really just engaging in play, which for me is a huge, a huge part of my art is just allowing myself to play as an adult and to value that. 
it's been so enriching in my life. I love it. So you you reclaimed that in a way. Absolutely. And how long has that been since that reclamation? Yeah, I'd say that reclamation probably started like six or seven years ago. Okay. I think at first it really started in my mind. Okay. As far as really embracing that part of myself. And it started with a practice of when people would ask me, oh, what do you do? I would just practice saying, I'm an artist. Yes, that's the thing. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. And so like, it's really like it started in my mind and then just started getting it out that way. And then, you know, it just realized itself by committing my time and effort to it. So once you invested in yourself as an artist, other people invested in you. How do you find that with volunteerism at the Santa Fe Opera? Yeah, I think it's actually really related. I think that valuing volunteers and showing them that you value them and investing in them, in fact, through volunteer appreciation, through integrating into the institution, valuing volunteerism, I think that they do invest more in the organization, not just through giving more time, but potentially recommending to other people that they volunteer. Some of our volunteers are financial donors to the organization. And, you know, I think that by investing in them and valuing them and making it really clear that we appreciate what they give, they're going to spread the good word about the organization to everybody that they know. And so it builds this value beyond that one person to the whole community through social capital and all of these other things that I think is a little bit undervalued in recognizing volunteers. What I've seen or experienced at the opera since you've joined the organization is there's now a culture around volunteerism. And that's a very different feeling. Yeah, and I, I think it's really essential yeah. for volunteer retention and continued recruitment of these people that are so vital to some of our programs. And I view them as colleagues, as part of the organization. And I that's something that I've definitely learned over decades of working with volunteers. Like, to me, they are my colleagues as much as you and Anna are. So. Indeed. So I'd like to rewind back up and take our listeners to the beginning of this episode and reintroduce you. Great. <laughs> so today we are joined by Marissa Aurora, artist and volunteer liaison at the Santa Fe Opera. Great. <laughs> From now on. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and I would like to take it a little bit back as well. And congratulations for your nomination. That's huge. Thank you. That's Thanks. amazing. Thank you. It's season five of Key Change, a podcast that began as a platform to talk about creating new operas through Opera for All Voices. But we didn't stop there. Maybe you found the show because you're an opera fan and supporter of new work. Maybe you're an advocate for social equity and accessibility in the arts. Maybe you're a friend, colleague, or a family member of someone who's been a part of the show. Well, this season is about you. We're expanding the conversation even further with the vision of inspiring the future leaders in opera. I'm Andrea Fellows Feinberg with the Santa Fe Opera. And I'm Anna Garcia with the Santa Fe Opera. On this season of Key Change, we hope that our guests, programs, and stories will spark new discoveries about how you can become part of this movement. Engaging artists and audiences, creators and communities, supporters and superfans to make the world a better place together. Marissa, what is volunteerism? Oh. <laughs> and how does it correlate with the Santa Fe Opera? Okay. Yeah, what is volunteerism? I mean, at its most basic level, it's people freely giving their time for a cause that's important to them. And freely, I don't mean, you know, they're not getting paid. I don't just mean free like that. I mean, it's freely given. Like, they are liberated to do with their time whatever they want, and they are choosing to do this thing. And, you know, that is incorporated into the Santa Fe Opera in many, many ways. I mean, there are volunteers in in most of the departments at the opera. You know, they're painting scenes. They're helping make props. They're sewing costumes. They're interacting with guests on a one-on-one -on -one level, giving backstage tours. They're helping run our preview dinners. You know, we have volunteers in our gardens. We have them in our production shows shops. We have them greeting guests before every performance. They're doing such a wide variety of things when you look at it. The, the value that they bring to this organization is really tremendous. How many volunteers would you say? Rounding it, it's about 200. And how many hours? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
thousands. Thousands of hours. Thousands. Thousands of hours, yeah. And some people have been volunteering with this organization since the 80s. For decades, It's yes. amazing. They are amazing. Yeah. I want to volunteer for the Santa Fe Opera. How do I do that? Yeah, so folks that are interested in volunteering with us can fill out an application on the Santa Fe Opera website, and that comes to me. And within that application, you can call out some of your skills and interests, and I can use that to place you into a department where you'll enjoy yourself and also be well-suited. So depending on what you're interested in and where your skill set lies, we can kind of go from there and find something that's a good fit for people. So you jumped around a little bit between volunteerism and your journey as an artist, but is there a pivotal memory that changed your life in whatever trajectory you're thinking of right now as an artist? Wow, that is such a difficult question. (laughs) You know, I can think of several memories specifically, but really there's a period of my life where I, you know, quit my job working as an ecologist, and I traveled full-time through Latin America for about six and a half years. And I think that time in my life was so pivotal and so life-changing as far as, for me, I think realizing what's important and realizing Mm -hmm. how I want to spend my time. I connected with so many different people during that time from all walks of life. And, you know, it really made me realize that I wanted to spend my time connecting with people, connecting with family, connecting with friends, and spend my time in a way that's most joyous to me. And, you know, that was after spending a lot of my time working for money, being worried about success in other people's eyes and what that meant to them. And kind of this whole experience of traveling made me realize that I could create my own definition of what success is and live my life by, by that. And so for me, that was really pivotal in the way that I think I conduct myself in the world. And I think also along with that, that whole journey in my life created this huge importance of compassion and kindness for other people, which I always consider myself a kind, compassionate person since I was a little kid, but it kind of took it to the next level. As, you had a practice for it. Yeah, as far as caring for other people and their experience and making that something that I try to bring into every interaction that I have with people. And that was so life-changing. Beautiful. And so how does that translate into how you work with the volunteers at the Santa Fe Opera? I think <laughs> I think it's pretty vital, mm-hmm. honestly. I view my job a lot as building relationships. So it's really getting to know people, getting to know their life, getting to know what's important to them and what motivates them to come and give their time to an organization and kind of where that passion lies, what the origins of it are, and being able to relate to them on an individual level. And because in our organization, we have a lot of folks that are kind of done with their working for money life. They've moved into retirement and they're doing things because they want to, not because they're rewarded financially or with like a lot of notoriety or success. And so I think really honoring the experience of those people, the wealth of experience. I mean, there's people coming from all over the world, people with PhDs, people that have lived these incredible lives. And I think just entering into relationship with them, like honoring that from the the outset is a really important part of my job. Basically, you're saying that in honoring their gift of time primarily, you give them time as well. Absolutely. And and anybody living a life, like we're going to have hiccups in our life. We're going to have emotions. We're going to have you difficult. Have all of those. Yeah, we're going to have, so we're, many. yeah, we're going to have conflict. We're going to have difficulty. And I think coming from a place of like, hey, you can bring that all here. You could bring that all to me. You can bring that all into, you know, the relationship that we have with each other and make it a space where we can be really real and in that way move through the things that maybe aren't so joyous and easy to get back to that place sooner. You've been with the opera now for a year. Do you have a volunteer story you can share with us? Yeah, I think that there are several stories and people that I can think of. And I I think 
all of them really go back to kind of the the return that people get on their volunteering as far as meaning in their life and purpose in their life. And there's been one volunteer that right when I started here, they're like, I'm retiring, not being involved anymore, I'm out of here. So kind of met them on the context of like, okay, like goodbye. And, you know, I was just emailing with them today. Like they haven't really (laughs) retired or gone anywhere. And I think that's... They actually re-engaged. They actually re-engaged. And I think that's just a testament to, you know, what it brings to their life giving their their time to this organization. And deepen their engagement. To deepen their engagement, yeah. When instead they're like, okay, I'm leaving. And instead, you know, they're back and they're back in different ways. I think we all sometimes maybe need to step back from what we're doing, maybe take a break and reevaluate, and that they were able to do that, take a step back, reevaluate, and then re-engage, I think is is a really great thing to see. And also in talking to some of these volunteers that have been here for decades, I think the social aspects of volunteering and and having kind of this network of other people that they can relate to as far as where their passions lie has helped them through some really tough times in, in life, honestly. And so that's been really cool to hear some of those stories of these programs kind of sustaining people in, in tough times. So in your happy anniversary, 12 months with the Santa Fe Opera, you've already instituted a brand new program. Yeah. So in October of last year, we started an internship with Northern New Mexico College. And this is a performing arts production internship where we bring a student from the college to the opera to actually work in some of the production shops to learn real world skills on top of their academic studies. So the spark for this started with meeting the Director of Integrated Studies of Arts at Northern New Mexico College and them expressing a desire to want to connect more with the Santa Fe Opera and kind of just sitting down with them and doing some brainstorming about, yes, you know, here's this college that I honestly didn't know that much about and I've discovered a lot of people don't know that much about. So it's in Española. It's a pretty small school, but they have a really rich arts program. So we sat down and brainstormed and, yeah, basically came up with this idea of an internship of actually bringing students to the opera for hands-on learning. From there, was really happy to gain the support of staff at the Santa Fe Opera and of the administration of the college, and we just went ahead and did it. And I think the goal of this program is really to build skills, employment capacity, and knowledge of performing arts careers in the local community. I think a lot of the time there's recruitment that is happening far away from the Santa Fe Opera. And even New Mexico. And even New Mexico. And, of course, we have a really prestigious apprenticeship program, technical apprentice, singer apprentice. And those those are, from my understanding, not usually a lot of local students. Those are really prestigious positions. And so our idea was kind of how can we take people that are local to the community that are maybe coming from underserved places and haven't had a lot of opportunity and give them this opportunity to come to the opera and learn directly from our staff some really valuable skills for for their future careers. And how did it go this past year? It went great. I think the first year of anything is is a learning process. And Absolutely. That's, that's how we approached it. That's how everybody approached it, which was great. So we had two different interns, one in the fall and one in the spring, and they both were really inspired and I think built a lot of confidence from the internship and learned a lot. They both reached out to me expressing that and, and also talking about how, yeah, it made them really realize moving forward the skills that they want to focus on for their career. And also just both of them, I think, kind of had their minds blown about the different types of careers involved in the performing arts. You know, one of them was studying information technology engineering and had no idea that that was applicable to performing arts professions. And so I think it was really cool for them to be able to make those connections and realize what a broad spectrum of careers are available within the performing arts. And now they go back to the college and that message disseminates. Absolutely. Yeah. And actually, they're going to be doing a a podcast of their own on the experience. The two of them. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's amazing. So really looking forward to hearing them in their (laughs) own voices. Because I think sometimes students coming into a professional setting like the Santa Fe Opera can be a little bit quiet and a little bit reserved. And I think it'll be really cool to see them talk amongst themselves about the experience and yeah. I think probably like open up a little bit more about what it meant to them. So I'm really excited to hear that. Exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. With all these amazing artistic and altruistic endeavors, what was it about the Santa Fe Opera that called to you? 
I think that it was a wanting to learn something new. That's something that's always driven me in in looking for jobs, is looking for a place where I'm going to be learning something. That's often been a reason why I've left jobs, is when I felt like I had kind of maxed out the amount of new things that I was learning. And while I have attended a couple of operas in my life, it was honestly a field that I didn't know that much about. And so for me, it seemed like a really interesting opportunity to to learn something that, that I've never endeavored to spend a lot of time learning, and, and that has been really cool. And I think also in this recommitment to myself as an artist, I wanted to make sure that any job that I took was was involved in the arts so that I would be meeting other creative people, learning, learning other people's creative processes, and just being exposed to a really new community. So you followed your curiosity. Yeah. May the learning never stop. (laughs) So a question that we ask as well is, um, if you could wave a magic wand and anything was possible for the future of arts education, what would you dream of? I think I would dream of arts education being valued as highly as STEM education. And I think having an acknowledgement of how those two are actually really intertwined and that there's a lot of creative thinking and creative problem solving that is involved in both the arts and, you know, engineering and math. When you get really deep into some of those things that I think are really highly valued in our society, like STEM, when you get deep into those things, kind of beyond the basics, I think they're really creative endeavors. And I think valuing arts education as a way to stimulate our neurotransmitters, to grow our brain development, to give permission to play in a society that I think is so focused on this concrete, tangible productivity and success in this very pigeonholed way would be amazing. And just recognizing the way that arts education can can help brain development for kids and for adults. It can help with focus and attention and concentration and um, managing your emotions and these huge things that are so important to life, but maybe are a little bit harder to measure on a test. And so I think that would be my dream, would be to bring arts education up to the same level that that we value other subjects in, in our schools. Agreed. I can see it. Yep. Yep, it's going to happen. <laughs> Marissa, what radio station should we tune into to catch you? On Sundays from 7 to 9 p.m., I turn into DJ Mariscos on KMRD LP Madre, New Mexico. It's a nonprofit station, all volunteer run, non commercial, freeform radio. That's 96.9 FM. What's the format for your show? It changes. So for a long time, every show I was actually doing an interview with a different person from around the world and then a collaborative playlist, oftentimes in Spanish. So I'd interview people I met during my travels and kind of talk to them about what was going on in their community and their life and what kind of music they were listening to. But sometimes I just bring in a bunch of vinyl and play kind of whatever I can get my hands on. Recently, I've been interviewing people working on interesting projects in Santa Fe. So I've brought some people on that are writing books, people that have albums coming out, people that are working on different social and artistic projects, which has been really fun. But I get to do whatever I want. It's free form. Is there anything else you want to share today with us? I don't know. I, um, I guess I feel like in what I realize is decades of working with volunteers, I kind of have this motto in my mind of volunteers run the world because that's something that has been my experience over and over and over again. And it's kind of this unseen and not very often recognized force in the world for good. And that's part of what I really love about what I do. Next time on Key Change, Opera for All Voices is back. We're going behind the scenes of The Pigeon Keeper for the orchestral workshop in association with the University of Michigan School of Music, Theater, and Dance, and Opera Lab. Key 
Change is a production of the Santa Fe Opera in collaboration with Opera for All Voices. We are produced and edited by Andrea Klender at the Creative Imposter Studios. I'm Andrea Fellows Feinberg. And I'm Anna Garcia. Our audio engineer is Cabby at Cabby Sound Studios in Santa Fe. Technical direction by Edwin R. Ruiz. Production support from Alex Riegler. Theme music by Renee Orth. Cover art by Dylan Crouch. Show notes by Lisa Witter. This podcast is made possible due to the generous funding from the Hankins Foundation, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and an Opera America Innovation Grant supported by the Anne and Gordon Getty Foundation. To learn more, visit us at santafeopera.org forward slash key change. <laughs> Mariscos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think we have an ending for the episode? I didn't feel like we buttoned it very well. But. DJ Mariscos is a great ending. That's what I was kind of thinking yeah. is that's the loop that we would come back to. Marissa, do you have anything that you feel like is important to share that you would like to say that we didn't say? I don't know. I, um, I guess I feel like I kind of have this motto in my mind of volunteers run the world because that's something that has been my experience over and over and over again. And it's kind of this unseen and not very often recognized force in the world for good. And that's part of what I really love about what I do. Well, that's a closing. <laughs> yeah. Got Thank it. You. <laughs> Boom. That's a cut. Awesome. Awesome.